Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Well, attackers have problems too, and one of those problems is how do they prevent systems that are not infected by the malware, for example, researchers and such, from connecting to their command and control servers. So essentially, attackers would like to authenticate the software that is connecting back in order to receive new commands. One strong way to do authentication, of course, is certificates. And Xavier ran into some interesting malware written all in PowerShell that implements client-side certificate-based authentication. Well, cryptographically, well, uh, pretty strong. The problem, of course, remains how do you protect the credentials? In this case, uh, the certificate and private key. The malware that Xavier ran into does use a password, but then again, the password has to be included in the malware as well. It was, in this case, just password, literally. And given the challenges, of course, how to protect a password like this, it doesn't really make a difference that the password was trivial. At this point, given the novelty of the approach, probably this really comes down more to security through obscurity, because many analysts aren't ready yet to look for a certificate that is being used to authenticate to a command and control channel. Of course, as a side effect, you also protect the channel itself from various machine in the middle attacks. And sticking with PowerShell here for another story, uh, Microsoft uh, did uh, publish a patch and a security advisory for PowerShell warning of a Windows Defender application control security feature bypass vulnerability. You may use Windows Defender application control in order to limit what an attacker could do with PowerShell. Well, due to this vulnerability, it was possible to bypass some of these restrictions. Affected is PowerShell version 7.0 and 7.1. The fix was released in PowerShell version 708 and 715, respectively. To check the version of PowerShell that you have installed, just run pwsh with the dash v option in order to check the version of PowerShell. Currently, PowerShell is not updated via Microsoft Update. However, Microsoft did announce recently that they attempt to enable this in the near future. And for the Juniper users out there, there is an update to June OS uh, fixing, I believe if I counted correctly, 16 different vulnerabilities, uh, no critical vulnerabilities. The most severe vulnerability, it's rated as high, is a cross-site scripting vulnerability. In addition, there are a couple of denial of service vulnerabilities, for example, IPv6 packets that uh, may crash your system. Also, a couple of things like removal of support for weak ciphers, uh, for example, for example, for SSH. Overall, I think I would rate them as well, uh, patch them as you get around to it. Definitely don't want to skip it, but uh, you probably don't need to rush out this particular update. And this weekend saw another edition of the Tianfu Cup. This event was set up in response to Chinese researchers no longer being allowed to participate in hacking contests outside of China. It follows the pwn to own model where there is a number of uh, current operating systems, current pieces of software that have to be compromised uh, by the competing teams and quite substantial prizes are being awarded. Pretty much all of uh, the systems that were offered at the event have been breached. Probably notable, uh, there was, for example, an iPhone 13 Pro running iOS 15, Google Chrome, also, of course, Google Exchange Server, and various virtualization technologies like Parallel, QEMU, VMware ESXi, and VMware Workstation. Bugs discovered in this contest are typically reported uh, to respective vendors and not made public until a respective patch has been released. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.